So we are having Benjamin here. He's going to give his GTK talk, traditional. And Benjamin is the GTK developer, and you can start. Yeah. It's this. Woo. Okay. Let's keep going. So, so first of all, uh, there's a GTK buff all Monday. So if you have any questions, I guess I won't get to questions in this talk. Bring them to there. Uh, second question, lightning talks. My original idea was everybody of the GTK developers gets up here and gives a short five minute introduction of what he has been hacking on and the features. And it turned out there's so many features that we couldn't cram them in the small talk. So I decided to sit here and quickly click through everything that was there. And uh, of course, I had my, to write my own presentation software, or rather, uh, I wrote a GTK4 application, or better, a UI file uh, to demo everything. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the beautiful thing about this is that it hopefully doesn't crash. But again, it's a UI file, so you can just put it into your application and have a full talk in it with just copying one file. So the first thing, GDK window in GDK4 is now called GDK surface. Well, that is kind of important because if you hear me talking about surfaces, I'm probably not talking about Cairo surfaces, but about GDK windows. Step two, GTK widgets are visible by default. So this means that all the stuff about show all and no show all and set whatever is all gone. But you will be very excited to find widgets that you didn't know were in your UI files or your code suddenly show up. There's a GDK builder tool command that you can run that will hopefully port it, but people have found exciting, exciting problems there. And I'm seeing you cannot see half the screen. I will make this window a tiny bit smaller then. Does it let me? No, it doesn't let me. Let's try it. Let's try it this way. Uh, okay, it doesn't let me. Two, three, four, five. Yes, we're building with Meson now. Um, that means we we threw all uh, all the ordered stuff. You have to use Meson, and it also means I don't have to care about build systems anymore because everything now just works. Uh, there is a. If not on the way to get GTK to actually easily build on Windows without following a tutorial that is like 20 pages long and breaks all the time, um, it's still an open question. I want to have an easy GTK4 build that every idiot can build on his Windows machine if he has one as a GTK4 requirement, but some Developers like to not make that a hard requirement. We'll see. We don't have any automatic, automatic options anymore. So there's no more stuff that automatically gets enabled without you noticing it. Everything is either enabled or disabled. That means that uh, if we decide we want some feature, you will probably depend on it, 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 suddenly depend on it, and then you need to build all the dependencies or you need to just disable it manually. And we have lots of new interest, interesting dependencies like Graphene, which is a library for doing 3D transformations and OpenGL and Vulkan and all that stuff. So if you're doing a GTK build now, it's a bit more exciting than it is if you build GDK3. But it's still way faster because it's Meson. Oh yeah, gestures. We have amazing gestures that you can even put in your UI file and try to click that button. 
button over there. Um, everything is gestures now. So we ported our whole toolkit to everything being gestures. There is no button press event or key down event or anything. You put a gesture there and that's it. You can put a gesture on any widget now, so you don't need to have a GDK surface uh, to have it supported. You just put it there and it works. The API for gestures is just GDK widget add controller, which is the, the name of the standard class. It's the GDK E GTK event controller. We have one for key, we have one for motion, we have one for scrolling, and we have the amazing legacy controller that you can still use to get at the events by hand and get button down events and whatever you had in GTK3 to make porting easier. So if you have a complex widget like a WebKit web, WebKit web view, for example, you can just put it to the legacy controller and go from there. And as I said, you can put event controllers and gestures in UI files and just have the functions that are used by them auto-connected and everything just works, hopefully. Yeah, we have a video widget. Uh, the video widget can display your own videos. This is one from our demo. It can display display some trailers you downloaded from the internet. And it can display them all at once. And we have a, usually it comes with sound, but not right now. Um, and you have a GDK med media controls widget that you can use to uh, play and pause videos or audio files, uh, audio objects that you have hooked up to that. This whole stuff, the, the, the UI and the API that we want hasn't been fleshed out yet, but it works. So we're now hoping for lots of people to find use cases for where you can use video because there is simple videos like for animations when, when things happen where you just have your tiny little icon there, which does obviously not need any controls to stop it. Or you can have bigger videos that somebody posted in your chat, for example. Or you can do things that nobody has yet thought about. Then there's GTK Picture. GTK picture is the new, what do we call it? The companion to GTK image. GTK image, the old image, is now only used for icons. So if you have your own little image and you want to have it, uh, in, or you put it into a GTK image, it will be scaled down to the icon size. And then it will be nice and small and flow with the text and no matter how big your image is and what the image does, it will be tiny, little, and small. If you want to have it big and you want to be able to have it scale with the UI, I can't take that, um, then you can put it in there and you can set it to keep the aspect ratio or not and you can tell if it's allowed to shrink to be as small as the UI makes it and all these features that people have always wanted are now done by the GDK picture widget. And it's done with the new thing that we invented is the wrong word, that we stole from the CSS and SVG guys, which is the paintable, which is our abstract object for something that can be drawn. Here's a bunch of paintables. One of the paintables is obviously an image simple image that you load from a file. The other one is the one you did yourself. Third one is a video. Video is just something that can be drawn. And here on the right side is a screenshot of the window itself. 
which is also something that just can be drawn. And we have a simple API that you can use if you want to use paintables or implement if you want to have your own. So there is the snapshot function. I'll get to snapshots in a bit for now think Cairo context where you give it a width and a height and say to the paintable, please draw yourself in this cute little size. And then it draws itself into it for whatever that means. You can ask it for its intrinsic size information, which it may or may not have. And then you can decide to size it that way. For example, the GTK picture widget uses that to keep the aspect ratio, like if it reports one, but if it doesn't, then it doesn't. And paintables can say that their size and their contents changed. And you can connect to a signal handler there and then react to it, which is how videos work. Basically, anything we can draw these days is done via paintables. It really requires a bit to get used to, but I'm porting more and more stuff to paintables and then doing weird stuff with it, so it's a lot of fun. GDK Texture is a replacement for PixBuffs. GDK Texture does not have pixels anymore. It just has a width and a height, and you can download it if you want to download it. It's also a paintable, so you can, of course, paint it. And you can create lots of ones from different kinds of pixels. The interesting stuff is the GL texture, where you can take a GL texture ID that you maybe get out of GStreamer and plug it into there and then hand it off to GTK. And GTK will, if it's using OpenGL, just use the texture ID, never look at the actual pixels, and just tell the uh, tell the graphics card to do stuff with it, which makes it surprisingly very fast. The other thing about textures is that textures, unlike pix buffs, are Im immutable. So they are guaranteed to never change, which, unlike pix buffs, which suddenly somebody scale simpled it or poked some pixels in there, suddenly broke stuff. Textures don't do that, which allows us to cache them everywhere and make stuff fast. We have pretty much every use of GDK PixBuff in the GTK API has been replaced by this new texture API and of Cairo surfaces. They're all gone. It's all a GDK texture now. And as a user, all you can do is just query the width and height and, of course, draw it. We now have a GDK clipboard. The GDK clipboard is essentially the, the same thing as GTK clipboard, only that it's now part of the GDK API, so there is no weird abstractions anymore that the clipboard has to go through that don't work on Wayland and Windows and then break all the time and stuff like that. Um, we also only have two clipboards now. The clipboard and the primary clipboard and not you can create one for some abstract something. I've redone the API to be the obvious GIO async API like when you read contents from the clipboard it's now a read contents async and then it comes back instead of that you do wait for contents and spin a main loop and everything goes bonkers. And you can now put G values into it, which means you can, for local drag and drop, put whatever in there as long as the other side can read it out. Like the tree view is using that to put tree row references into it, so you can drag and drop tree row references, and the notebook is using it to put notebook tabs into it. And uh, the DD API, we're in the process of getting there, doing the same thing, using the same infrastructure, and then you can drag and drop whatever you want to drag and drop. 
like I imagine you could have your GNOME to do tasks or your PTV film clips or your everything as objects and drag them around and you can register automatic deserialization and serialization so that you can drag and drop it into other applications which is how we drag textures and pixels around or how we drag text around because text is just g type string and then it gets deserialized to whatever the system uses that you're using and then you don't have to think about it yeah widgets these days are composited or that's at least what we are trying to make people do I'll have an example here if you use at the widget tree in the inspector you can see that the yes please give me back my inspector you can see that the spin button these days is a GTK box or contains a GTK box that contains an entry which only contains event controllers that and also contains uh, two buttons the plus and the minus button and the entry the box spin button just being one example the header bar of course has a box for the title and has the spin button here and has the uh, has the other box and it's everything everything is now built out of tiny cute little widgets and uh, all those widgets have gestures as you can see and uh, we hope that everybody is going to build widgets this way in the future because it's just a lot easier than if you have this complex mess of everything that uh, messes up your source files yeah and the nice thing about it is that while we were doing that we realized all the pain points in writing your own widget so we made custom widgets easier for a start in GDK 4 CSS is built in that means whenever you create a new widget it will automatically have a background and the border and it will do the padding and margin and whatever stuff outline and focus handling and hover handling and all of that stuff um, you will have a single coordinate system not in GTK 3 where you had event handling based on the window size allocation based on the parent coordinates and drawing based on the top left of your widget in GTK 4 everything event controllers drawing size allocation gives you coordinates relative to the top left of your content area where the content area is what is left over after you do after you remove the CSS padding and margins and borders so whenever you talk about zero zero it's the top left of the widget so in the spin button case this will be around around where the cursor changes no a bit inside the cursor because there is a border around it and some padding around it actually it is probably exactly the size of this box here which you can see blink long enough oh well anyway the content area is this is your area and zero zero is the top left where everything starts as I said before everything is done with event controllers and there's no GDK windows anymore so no child windows no client side windows it's all removed it's all GTK now and event handling is done from event to uh, is done from widget to widget to widget to widget and which also of course means that you can now attach event controllers as I said everywhere so if you want to have a label that you can click on you would use a label and add a 
press handler to it, a multi-press handler. One of the big things about drawing is that we now do retained drawing. Retained drawing means we first take a snapshot, as we call it. This is where the snapshot I demonstrated earlier or mentioned earlier comes from, where we create all the drawing information for a widget. And then there's a second step where we take this information, give it to the renderer, and the renderer actually creates the pixels from it and puts them on the screen. We have a Vulkan renderer and a GL renderer and for, f and for compatibility and uh, fallback reasons, we have a Cairo renderer so far. We also now cache the render rendering, I should have said snapshot, the snapshot output for every widget, which means um, that if nothing changed about a widget, we will just reuse what we drew last time and your widget will not be told to draw again. And because we now keep all the rendering information around, we can then compute by just looking at the previous rendering and the current rendering and compare the two and, and, and compute the area that actually changed. So if you say, I need to draw something again, and then everything is the same but these five pixels in the top right, we will figure that out and only redraw the five pixels in the top right. It also means that our queue functions are now a lot faster. So you notice that when you run animations, that if you call GTK widget queue draw in a lot of places, you can see it show up in your profiles in GTK3 quite easily. In GTK4, that does not happen any more than because all we do in queue draw is we throw away the cached rendering which is a simple operation. And if the cache rendering is already gone, there's nothing to throw away anymore, and the function just returns. And all of this is done with GSK. GSK has three steps. It has the snapshot API that is mirrored on the Cairo API, so you can easily port your custom widgets to hopefully do create a lots of performant render nodes. But of course, we have a snapshot API that gives you Cairo context, so you can just easily port by just doing the Cairo thing and then caring about that later. The snapshot creates the render nodes, which are the retained drawing operations. And then the renderer goes at them and um, renders them on screen. We can use the recorder to actually record this rendering of the widget and then have a look at these render nodes that get created. So there's the basic node, then it draws the background, then it draws the top row, then it draws a shadow around it, then it draws a border around it, then it does another corner which does a rounded clip. Now we need to find it somewhere here on the screen. There is an RGB in there. There's a border here. This is how the render node tree looks. Here's the GSK text. Here's the other text. The other text if it is transformed to that scale from this small size. And those are the three lines of text that get drawn. And this is the render nodes. These render nodes get handed, this information gets then handed to OpenGL, gets transform, or gets the GL renderer, just throws it basically directly at the GPU with the correct shaders to generate the output. And then we have a lot of changes in GDK. GDK screen is gone. G everything that GDK screen did is now part of GDK display because in GDK 3 those were just two objects and they had a one-to-one -one relationship. GDK device manager is part of GDK seed. 
and we've simplified a lot of our APIs um, because Wayland is a lot simpler than the X11 and we decided we wanted to have an API that is easily portable to different rendering systems which means in particular Wayland and X11 but also Windows and OS X um, so lots of X-isms are gone, like foreign or input-only windows, root windows. Um, there is a second line in there. Yeah, events are events these days are G objects. We ported them to not be some magic something anymore. They are now a regular G object. They're easy to bind. You query them with regular object APIs other than that they pretty much work the same and of course GDK window is now called GDK surface so when somebody talks about surfaces it's probably not Cairo surfaces but GDK windows and with that I think I'm done We have five minutes for questions. Of course. Christian. What is my plan for accelerating text rendering? Well, that is quite easy to answer. We have a font spoff on Saturday, and we'll talk about it then. So no concrete plans at the current point in time depends a lot on, on the ideas of a lot of people that get together here and then we'll probably make something up. I could now do this and say I did this thing with the Cairo renderer because if I used the GL renderer here it would look like this and the fonts are not quite as amazing if you do that. So there are still some problems remaining. And now let me quickly move that away so nobody... Any other questions? Yes. Sorry. So that is another interesting question. People have ported applications to GTK4 and you said you you were the person that said hey it's e it's it's less code than before and it was an easy port that i could do in an afternoon so you could probably try on the other hand he has done that two or three times by now because <laughs> we tend to to change things um Again, it's something we need to talk about at the BOF. I actually want people to start porting because while I was preparing this UI file here, I found a lot of things where the API wasn't clear. Should it do this or should it do that? And nobody had tried it yet. I mean, obviously somebody had written a demo somewhere that did something and the demo works. But if you look at it in detail, some questions come up. And I, and, I, and I expect that if people port applications, they will come and uh, open issues or in, come into IRC and complain and say, why is this API so stupid? And then we'll say, oh, we didn't even realize it does that yet because we never used it that way. So we would love people to port to GTK4. And we think the API with two or three remaining places like drag and drop um, are still not quite finished but everything else is pretty solid by now and there's of course also the possibility that you uh, do a GTK4 port and then ship a flat pack with included GTK4 but I have no idea if we want to focus on that 
and release something linked against GTK4, deliver this flat pack as part of GNU. So, no idea. Owen. So, so there's two answers to that. One of them is I have never thought about that from a newcomer point of view, but I hope like GTK picture versus GTK image is one of these things where we've argued a lot back and forth about people asking questions about why is this sizing itself so stupidly and why is it not doing this? and shouldn't we have an API that adds this? And then you say, well, that is stupid for icons. And, 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 and then coming up with APIs that are simple and do what somebody expects. And, but we are mostly doing it when people come and complain about it, which is obviously not something newcomers do. So the answer to what are we doing to make it easier for newcomers is we haven't even thought about it. Federico. How do you port the large application to GTK4? Um, the same way you ported it to GTK3, like you ported to the newest GTK3 without deprecations. And then you have to bite the bullet and move it over. That should be relatively easy um, because we, we didn't have any huge changes in, in our application API. So we're optimistic that that is not, at least not more problematic than it was in the GTK3 days. And of course, you can do a bunch of things to make it easier, like gestures exist in GTK3. So you can port all your event handling to gestures in GTK3 already. And uh, then it will be easier when you do the switch. which is an interesting thing that we probably should do before we release GDK 4.0. We should figure out how to report WebKit. I have no idea. I haven't tried. So I think a few people tried having a go at it, and uh, some of them already gave up when they had to compile WebKit for that. So. <laughs> One more question. Yeah. yeah. For maintaining the third party feeds, what's, how hard is the port going to be? What's it going to look like when you recommend that people start looking at So, Themes has, um, has a few issues, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to come up, if I, if I say it should be quite simple or not a lot of issues. So there, there are a bunch of things that we changed in the CSS, like icon sizes can now be set from the CSS so you can determine. <laughs> we seem to have done the right thing there. Um, so you can now say all my toolbars should be 32 pixels and all my menus should be 16 pixels and it will just automatically work. So stuff like that is something that other themes will have to do too unless they want small toolbars. So there's a few things you need to change, but the big change from a theming point was when we 
introduced i think it was 3.20 when we did all this this gadget stuff where we basically went the composition route and then for gtk4 we just turned all of these gadgets into real widgets but everything else kept the same apart from of course the widgets where we can now do smarter stuff where we touch the widgets and then but most of those we we kept the css and just changed the names so the answer is i don't know how much it is for somebody who looks at an existing theme and tries to port it to gtk4 but obviously adwaita still looks like adwaita in no we just use the yeah, slowly ported adwaita and if you use where is it? Build demos widget factory GTK four widget factory. It still looks like widget factory, and it also still works. So there's no no visual glitches, no, or at least no big visual glitches anywhere. I can just now. Git diff GTK three. Well, let's let's do three dot twenty two twenty two dot zero. Where is it? GTK theme at Wita, and I should probably do a dash dash that. Yeah, that was not very. So it's like 700 lines in the manual stuff and uh, the generated CSS file is uh, whatever. So it's a 700 line change and those files are. larger quite a bit so it's like 10 to 20 percent of the lines have been touched but you would have to look at the details like maybe somebody just did a white space cleanup i don't know all right so uh, i'm sorry to interrupt but we are running out of time uh please show up to the gtk both if you are interested in more stuff right you have a date yeah, it's on Friday and uh, there is the full day, oh, cool. so we will have lots of time to talk about whatever.